All right, so uh, our little last uh, discussion today is going to be about the AV blocks, right? We just talked about the overview and what the P wave is doing, and that's through your atrial contraction. But now we have some problems that can arise, and we can have these blocks. So starting over here, first, just a recap, we have our SA notes, our primary pacemaker of the heart, 60 to 100 beats a minute. Then we, it's followed by our AV node. 40 to 60 times a minute, and then eventually our ventricular uh, response, which is about 20 to 40 times a minute. In the normal pathway, the SA node fires electricity down the AV node. The AV node says, I like that electrical current. I'm going to send it on through the ventricles, and we'll get depolarization. Remember, the SA node also fires electricity over here, um, over to the left atrium as well. So it's firing this beat down. But there is a disturbance. There is some kind of problem here, some kind of block. The AV node is either not conducting a beat or an electrical impulse down the ventricles, or it is, it's just slowing it down. So instead of firing it a millisecond later, it may take five or six milliseconds to go. So coming over here, how do we discern this? The paramedic students ask a lot, well, what's the difference between a second degree type one and a third degree? And is there significance of that? And so we'll break this down, all right? So whenever you're looking at blocks and trying to discern blocks, ask yourself, what is the atria doing? Because this is where our, our primary pacemaker comes from, is the atria. So we look at the thing called the, the uh, PRI, the PR interval, all right? When the SA node fires and that atria contracts, what is our interval from the QRS from the ventricle contracting? And we like that to be under 0.20. So we like that to be under 0.20 or five of the small boxes on your EKG going left to right. You have to remember each little box is 0.04 milliseconds. So five of them would be 0.20. If there's a delay, if it's over one whole box wide, which this one would absolutely be, you can see that there's a conduction delay. So our P to our R interval is lengthened out. So it's a little bit slower. A first degree block, guys, symptomatic, take them to the hospital. Um, it, we very rarely do anything more than just symptomatic care and talk to the patient. Uh, I have never treated a first degree block. It usually has to be over 500 milliseconds before they would require atropine. Um, people live in a first degree all day long. Athletes, uh, high endurance athletes, um, a lot of people, no big deal. It's just a delay or a PR interval of over 0.20. So we come back to the board. What is our PRI? What is our interval? What is the atria doing? Break it down very simply. If the PRI is constant, so that means there's one P for every QRS, it's just delayed, it's a first degree block. That's all that means. So I have a P wave, I have a QRS wave, there's just a delay of over, over, over a 0 0.20, it's a first degree block. And like I said, we really don't do anything about that. All right, so that was the first degree block. Now we're gonna go over in the, kind of like thinking how the severity of, of AV blocks in our treatment, we're gonna go to second degree type one, all right, which is our, our Weichenbach. So at, I ask myself again, what's the atria doing? What's my PR interval, all right? So if my PR interval is not constant, so I know at least it's not a first degree, if I have a variable PR interval, I can just look at my, my RRs now, my RR interval. Is that variable or is it constant? If I took my fingers, I had calipers and it marched out perfectly, well, I know it's probably a third, which we'll talk about later, but mine is variable in this situation. What does that mean? That means, here's our second degree type one, our winky buck. You look at your complex, always read it left to right for this one. I have a normal PR complex, right? PR QRS. My P wave starts to get a little further away. It's getting further away again, and then it drops that complete QRS complex, and then it'll start all over again. So I think about it, and I teach about it as Winky Bach walks away. My P wave is named Winky Bach. He's walking away. He's getting further and further away from that QRS until eventually he outruns it, it drops, and then it starts over again. What do we do with this? This patient could be bradycardic. All right, mildly bradycardic. If this patient is symptomatic, um, what I would start with first is atropine. I would absolutely start with 0.5 of atropine. After I did my IVO2 monitor, I would definitely want to get a 12 lead on this patient. 
Um, put the pads on just in case. These blocks going from a first or a secondary type one to a secondary type two to a third, these blocks, they get worse and they can escalate um, as a patient deteriorates. So once again, what's the atria doing? My PR interval, it's variable. Because you can see my PR interval keeps changing and keeps getting longer. Now I don't even have a PR interval and it starts over again. So that's your second degree type one. So coming back over to our, uh, our expert drawing of our heart, because this is what a heart really looks like, right? So our first degree usually starts up and it's just a block between the SA and the AV node right here. Our second degree type one, you can kind of mentally think about it. The block is a little bit more significant, all right? The SA node is, is shooting out the, those P waves. Um, if we had, you know, nine P waves in a six second strip, we'd have 90, our rate would be 90. But the AV node isn't conducting those down. We only have six QRSs. That means my atrial rate is firing out at 90, but my ventricular rate is only firing out at 60 times a minute. And remember, the ventricular rate, the squeeze is what gives our, our, our brain, our blood, not, not our atrial rate. So it's starting to get worse. All right, so we've covered first degree. We've covered second degree type one, our Winkiebach. Now we're, we're, we're escalating up. Our blocks are getting worse. So think about blocks getting worse. It's getting lower in, in, the, uh, in the atria. So now we're gonna go over second degree type two. Once again, when you ever hear the word AV block and you have to decipher it, ask yourself, what is the atria doing? Let's go back to our PRI, our, 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 um, our PR interval. Well, is it constant or is it variable? In this case, with a second degree type two, our PRI is constant. But what happens? Do I have one P for every QRS? Well, in this one, I don't. I have more P's than I have QRS's. So what does that look like? Well, this is what it looks like. I have usually a normal complex. It'll keep going left to right, and then I'll have a rogue P wave. I'll have a normal complex. I'll have a rogue P wave, and this is cyclical. This just keeps going on. Or I could have a P wave, a P wave, and a normal QRS complex. This would be a three to one conduction. This would be a two to one conduction. What is happening here? If this was a six second strip, right? So this is three seconds and this repeats it. So I have one, two, three. My heart rate would be 60 and my atrial rate, but my ventricular rate, look at this guys, would only be 20. Do you think the patient would be symptomatic with a heart rate of 20? Absolutely. This block is lower on the totem pole, right? It's as more severe. The atrial rate is kicking out 60 times a minute, but the, the atria is blocking it and the ventricles are only seeing 20 beats a minute. This patient is gonna be symptomatic. This patient, no doubt, we would go immediately to a pacemaker and we put a transcutaneous pacing on them and uh, that's a critical care, that's a code three transport to the hospital, guys. You can try atropine with your second degree type two um, while, you're, while you're planning and getting your pacer pads all, all done up. But at the end of the day, this patient is going to get a pacemaker. That is the definitive care and treatment for a second degree type 2 AV block. All right, guys, so finishing up our blocks, we're now on third degree. Third degree AV block, or known as complete heart block. That doesn't sound good. All right, but believe it or not, some people live in these, these uh, blocks. So how are we going to decipher this one? In my opinion, this is one of the easiest ones to, to ever memorize, OK? Once again, we're talking about a block. We go right back to the fundamentals. What is the atria doing? Okay, so what is my PRI? What's my, my PR interval? Well, with a third degree, it should be variable, all right? Our R to R complex is constant. This is what makes deciphering a third degree so fundamentally easy. And when we go over it, you'll see it. So my PR is variable. My RR is constant. I have a third degree AV block. What does that look like, okay? What that looks like is you'll have P waves. We always talk about um, they're not communicating with the QRS. So you'll definitely have more P waves than you will QRSs. So I have a P wave, I have a P wave. If you look over here, I have a notched T wave. So what's going on in that? That P wave is buried in that T wave. And that's one of the, the most universal things you can see when you look at a, a third degree block. I have another P wave, it's right it falls right after the T wave and then it comes here again. So in the blue, if I had calipers or I use, I use fingers out in the field, I'll just pause my strip or I'll print out my strip. 
and I'll just take my fingers and I'll match it up to the P wave. My P waves are constant. No matter what I do, my P waves remain constant. With third degree, it doesn't matter if you go left to right or if you go right to left. Your P waves are gonna march out. My QRS complexes, my QRS complexes in the green, they march out. Whether I go left to right, right to left. But as you can see, there are more P waves than there are QRS complexes. So if this, once again, was a six second strip, so you know if this was six seconds, you'd say one, two, three, four, five, six. Our atrial rate is, is 60, but our ventricular rate is 30, okay? This block is probably the worst block to have for the patient. It can be wide. You can have a wide QRS complex, or you can have a narrow QRS complex with third degree. It doesn't really affect our treatment. The definitive care for a third degree heart block is pacer when they're symptomatic. So remember, you, you treat the patient, not the monitor. So coming back up to our heart, think of a third degree as right on the border between the atria and the ventricle. Because if it's a third degree heart block and the QRSs are narrow, it's right above. It's still pretty much atrial in nature. If it's a third degree heart block and the QRSs are really wide, the block is right, right below the atria, okay? Why is that significant? As the block gets lower, the QRSs get wider, the heart rate will start to get slower because there's more, there's more conduction delay. These patients are usually, if they are symptomatic, they're hypotensive, they're bradycardic, they don't feel really well, and they could be altered. These are the patients that uh, we really recommend you go right to transcutaneous pacing. Uh, atropine is really not effective in a third degree heart block and actually can make it worse. Atropine will speed up the atrial rate because uh, atropine is an atrial drug. It's not for the ventricle. So all you're doing is now taking this SA node and making it fire from 60 to let's say 130 times a minute, but you still have that conduction blockage. So that's gonna cause the, the heart to get more ischemic faster. Okay, so we're gonna do our take home points and our wrap up. Going, starting here, remember that as your block increases, a first degree is pretty benign in just about everybody. Your second degree type one, the SA node's still kicking out those beats, but the AV, there's an AV block, it's not conducting down, it's starting to get worse. Your second degree type two is um, uh, getting even worse. Your atria is still kicking out those beats, but the, there's a blockage, they're not conducting to the ventricles. Remember, the ventricle is what gives us our, our brain, our lungs, our organs, our blood supply. And then our, our worst one, our third degree heart block, okay? The atria is still kicking out. There's definitely more P waves and QRSs, but the ventricles just aren't capturing those beats. As the blocks get lower, they get more symptomatic. Um, second degree usually progresses to a third degree. Ultimately, what does that mean? That means we ask ourselves, what is the atria doing in all our blocks to just say, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna just take them to the hospital symptomatic? Are we gonna give atropine? Or are we gonna go to ultimately pacing the patient?